is Guillermo Escobar. I work with Dr. Moore from 2002 until 2008. And it's hard to begin to describe what you learned from Dr. Moore and how he changed what you do and who you are and things like that. But surgically, I would tell you that Dr. Moore would somehow stimulate you into thinking trauma is actually a really good specialty. And no matter what people might think otherwise, he always seemed to make it doable. No matter where the hole was, no matter how big it was, and no matter how much blood seemed to be going out, he would find a way to get you in and get you out. The most important thing I learned surgically now as a vascular surgeon is he showed me how to control a room. Whenever everything was going badly, he would always be able to put his hand where it needed to be and look to the left, look to the right, like a quarterback telling everyone what the next play was. And when everyone was ready, then he would let go and then you'd get out. And that's something that is really hard to teach. It's hard to teach when you're in an emergency situation and you're trying to get in and trying to get out, but he could always do it. That leadership in the operating room is something that I definitely learned from him. The other thing about Dr. Moore is that he's truly, we used to call him the Michael Jordan of surgery, where he was an editor of a very large volume uh, surgical journal, and he always had some papers he was looking at and grading and going through. At the same time, the basic science research aspect, he was always just up to date on, no matter how small the minutia was with the, with the cells and the molecules and everything, he, he could just run that with no problems. And at the same time, just surgically, he was just fantastic. And I think the idea of being a triple threat is something that's so absolutely hard to do, especially in the realm of basic science. And that's something that he will always just definitely runs with it like no one else. The third thing that Dr. Moore taught me is that you have to maintain balance. And this concept of work hard, play hard, we all talk about, but nobody could do it quite as well as he. He always involved his family. He always did his travel, but he always did his work. He was a superb clinician, as well as a superb scientist and a superb father. And that's something that I strive for every day. And I try to incorporate my family and my activities, and I definitely follow in that sort of footstep that he established. So I think in this day and age where we're all wondering about work-life balance and doing the right thing, and how do you get a, you know, how can you, have such a good relationship with everything and still be productive. There's no one like more in my four institutions and 20 years almost uh, out of medical school. I've never seen anything like it. I, I'm ecstatic to be here and, and I look forward to uh, saying hi. Thank you very much. So previously I, I sent some uplifting thoughts about, you know, how E. Moore made me a better surgeon or a better academician. I want to tell you some of the things I learned about life from E. Moore. So the first thing I learned is that marathons are not for me. And it always seemed when I was on trauma that everybody was a runner. And uh, I was sort of thinking about it, maybe I should sort of do that, and maybe my knees are okay. And then I asked them, I said, so how, how was the, the marathon you guys ran the other day? And apparently E. Moore was, was in it. And they said, oh yeah, it was, you know, it was hard, it was this, it was that, but he said, E. Moore was amazing. You know, Moore was like running and all of a sudden like his intestines were becoming ischemic from, from mesenteric ischemia from his run. So then he started having uncontrollable diarrhea, but he didn't stop, he just kept going. He ran in a river and just washed it off and beat his time, you know, by five minutes or something. And I remember thinking, that's ridiculous. And that reminds me of like, I don't know if you've heard of the, the Chuck Norris stories, but you know, Chuck Norris doesn't do push-ups. He pushes the earth down. That's like E. Moore. E. Moore's like the Chuck Norris of vascular surgery or general surgery. I mean, I don't think I could run a marathon and just keep going when I had to lose control of my bowels. But to E. Moore, it was just lubricant, so he didn't chafe. Second thing I learned from E. Moore is that you can mix multiple food groups with tequila. Apparently, there's a tradition in the lab that I think my class was the only one ever, yes, all of you looking around know exactly what I'm talking about, that you can have like a raw egg with tequila shots and this and that and the other and that's something until proven otherwise was invented by E. Moore. And I don't know about you but I'm from Mexico City and nobody in Mexico takes tequila shots with eggs and things like that so I had no idea that you could mix those food groups up but I guess it may or may not be good for you. Next thing I learned about E. Moore is whatever you do don't think you can out drink him because you can't. Nobody can. 
Everybody tries, but you can't. There's absolutely no one that can beat a more at drinking. And that's it. I learned that. Take it. Go with it. Don't mess with him. Um, the last thing I learned about e more is you don't know holiday parties. You think you've been to a holiday party, you think you've had a good work party. Unless you've been to the Moore house, then you know what a holiday party. And then when you get to the holiday party and you get blown away with the holiday party, you think you know eggnog, you don't know anything about eggnog. And I'm gonna throw this one out to Mrs. Moore because nobody ever to this day can make eggnog like that family. In fact, on multiple occasions, as the years went by, I soon realized that I needed to get that, that recipe and I couldn't. And it's hidden in this place somewhere in the kitchen and you can't find it. And one day I almost found it and I was flipping through it and almost took a picture of it. And then Mrs. Moore caught me and I had to like play dumb and like, oh, I'm just wasted guy just walking around looking for something else. So whatever happens, if any of you know Mrs. Moore, you've got to buy her something or maybe sell her something or maybe you have something on her. But if you can get the, the recipe for the, for the eggnog, you are golden. And if she's in here, please know, I need the recipe. Please, 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 thank you. Gee, you're the most committed academic surgeon I've ever met. You're a consummate clinical surgeon, a uniquely qualified and capable and inspiring and imaginative investigator, a charismatic educator, and you do some pretty good administration. You're the quadruple threat. I remember with great joy starting out collaborating with you doing the trauma prime cells and now you've kept that going for almost three decades a remarkable accomplishment you're working on the whole concept of post-stress post-trauma coagulopathy in a way of bringing basic science into the clinical sphere that's again inspiration my greatest joy however is to call you a friend Thank you for all of our interactions. I have happy memories of all of them. Thank you very much. Gene and Sarah, Lori and I have been tremendously privileged to raise our families alongside of your families. You've always served as an inspirational example of what academic surgeries, trials and problems and associated difficulties can be. And you've always effortlessly uh, exceeded all of them as an example to all of us. We feel very fortunate to have known you and raised our children and our families together. Thank you. Alden knew Gene from the time he got to Colorado. I first met Gene and Sarah at a picnic where Hunter was sitting on Gene's shoulders, happily planting an ice cream cone into his scalp, and Peter had not yet come into the world. We've since gotten to know them both well, and I want to talk about Sarah. Sarah is was always one of the most loving and responsible members of her original family, and through the years was always caring for her parents and her brothers. She was also a great social hostess. She um, had in, uh, many, many Halloween parties, and Christmas parties that often included entertaining some of the police force of Greater Denver, but they were always wonderful. She was an animal lover. She didn't get upset when their German Shepherd was painted green by Hunter, raced upstairs onto the new beige carpet and rolled. And she even wasn't upset when they found after a vacation that they had an electrocuted iguana. Um, she was always a very good travel companion for Jean, would go on trips whenever her job would let her. She's a family physician par excellence and has always worked full time. And I was so impressed that she became my mother's doctor and my mother adored her. And finally, she is the ultimate mother who provided the glue 
that always kept their family together. She wanted them together at all times. She would ski monstrous mountains just to keep up with the boys and Jean. She would host their, their family and all their friends at a, any moment. And she was a great teacher. She wanted them always to succeed in school, and they did. They have both become very impressive doctors in their own right. At our daughter and son-in-law's wedding, she was actually asking questions of Hunter so he could pass his board exams. She is dedicated. And what's more, she is the glue that holds the family together. So as each of these two are very superior people, Together they make a, a pair and a foursome that are beyond any signs of flaws and imperfections. They have succeeded in all they do and they're very good friends. Dr. Moore, congratulations on this well-deserved honor and thank you from all of us who wear the uniform that you supported throughout the years in both your roles as a trauma surgeon and the editor of Journal Trauma. Congratulations, sir. Part of Gene's, what sets Gene apart, is his voice. And you've never heard it until you're at the top of a ski slope, most notably Steamboat. And he's tired of everybody lollygagging around. The signal to move is, Sarah, it's getting dark. We take off. Love you, Gene. Love you, Sarah. I first met Gene Moore in about 1985 and even at that early stage I was impressed by the leadership that he demonstrated in his team uh, and his incredible work ethic. Uh, over subsequent years I've become a good personal friend to Jean and Sarah uh, and the family and uh, have benefited from his mentorship, advice and guidance. He has generously taken students from my university and provided them similar uh, qualities which they often reflect back to me and ask how, how Jean is doing. Uh, I'm hugely privileged to have been able to be associated with Jean uh, even somewhat remotely over many years uh, and I, I wish him well in his future life and uh, future activities. Hi Jean. Uh, I have lots of fond memories of uh, time with you in both Steamboat and in Vermont. I was so excited when Hunter came to med school here. Um, but one way in which you have shaped my life is during the summer of my freshman or sophomore year in high school when I'm sure my dad talked you into giving me an internship in your basement lab. And uh, I gotta be honest, my memory of that summer is uh, biking from my house to Denver General and spending hours stuffing glass pipettes with cotton. Uh, so I learned a lot of patience that summer. Um, but, uh, but I did write my college admission essay uh, around that uh, experience and it got me into several schools. So thank you for that. Um, and thank you for all the other ways that you have inspired our family. Um, you were, I know, a partner in crime with my dad, and um, you are one of a kind, and I love you, and I uh, wish I could be there tonight. There are very few words more loosely used than the word legend, but that's not the case with Gene Moore. Uh, Gene Moore is the definition of a legend. Every metric or measure that you use to define legend, that's Gene Moore. If I open up a Random House dictionary and looked up the word legend, I would probably see a picture of Gene Moore. Um, the four pillars of acute care surgery, you notice I didn't say trauma in acute care surgery, acute care surgery, four pillars. Obviously, each pillar will have a portrait of Gene Moore. First will obviously be emergency general surgery, critical care, surgical rescue and the anchor pillar, trauma. And for that, I want to thank Jane Moore. We have all been the beneficiaries of your contributions. Good evening. Um, it is my honor to be here to wish Dr. Moore uh, the best of luck uh, on the occasion of his retirement. Um, 
Get a message. I'm not going to lie, it was a shock to me personally to hear that he was retiring and moving to Florida to start a new life. What a what a amazing career that He's not retiring. What? He's not retiring. He's not retiring. Oh, thank God. Oh. He's on the schedule for next week. Oh. Oh, well. Dr. Moore. Um good. Oh. Good luck. Um, I've known Gene for um, over 20 years, and uh, I think what we all in our department appreciate most about Gene is that he is the consummate uh, trauma surgeon. Um, when he comes into OR1, there's a real sense of calm that uh, we all feel when he's there, and uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't get up into our business at all. Instead, he is really focused on the the surgical problem in front of him. And he may occasionally uh, look up, up over the drape and, and ask us if we're giving blood, or, or he may say that the heart feels kind of empty and the patient could probably use some more volume. But otherwise, he's not calling for things, he's not yelling for things. He is focused on the problem in front of him and he assumes that what we're doing is, is the best job that we can. And of course, with Gene uh, operating, usually it goes well, but when it doesn't go well, he always involves us in the decision as to whether or not we need to proceed. So I cannot think of anyone who's had a greater and, and lasting impact on the management of trauma at this institution, and thus I think it is fitting uh, that we name our shock and trauma center after him. Uh, Gene, thank you for everything that you have done for, uh, for me, uh, for our department, and for this hospital. 30 years ago, Gene Moore and I became friends and allies in the crusade for injured patients. When together, we led the ACS Committee on Trauma from 1990 to 1994. I learned then that Gene was a surgeon's surgeon and a true innovator of trauma care, both in the lab and at the operating table. Gene, it's hard to imagine a more rewarding career than saving lives day after day, night after night. And I'm proud to have been at work in that golden age of early trauma surgery alongside a master like you. And Gene, knowing our shared love of the Mountain West I filmed this for you at our home in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, with a bull elk bugling loudly in the background. Congratulations, my friend, on a great honor, well deserved. Gene, from the ENT division at Denver Health, congratulations on the Ernest E. Moore Shock Trauma Center. I was a uh, ENT resident and then later an attending here uh, as a medical corps officer from Fitzsimmons Army Medical Center in the late uh, 1980s and early 1990s. Uh, I've had a strong maxillofacial trauma orientation throughout my military career and want to personally thank you for all you've done for the American soldier, both directly and indirectly. Uh, you've been uh, a yardstick uh, that we all measure up to and you've certainly uh, taught many uh, people to be uh, all they can be. Uh, you've been a model leader by example. Your humility and wit are a big part of the package that you've given us. God bless your journey as you have blessed so many of ours. Well-deserved congratulations. Dr. Moore, David Spencer here at Pride Time Medical. And I too honor you for this uh, signal achievement and honor. But uh, you're a larger than life guy. And uh, gee, whether it's swimming in a fjord at midnight in Norway or falling off a cliff, uh, there's never a dull moment when Gene Moore is around. And, but more importantly, your impact, never a dull moment there. Thousands of lives that you save directly and indirectly and your legacy and uh, your family and your sons carrying it on and the impact that your patients will have on the world uh, that is profound, and I'm personally grateful, and uh, I look forward to maybe doing one-tenth as much as you've done to impact and make the world a better place. Congratulations, sir, and I doff my hat to you. 
I am very proud to be a member of Dr. Moore's 24-7 research team. In the last decade or so, uh, under Dr. Moore's leadership, I got involved in all aspects of clinical research, from local observational studies to large randomized clinical trials. Aside from learning about trauma and bleeding and clotting, working with Dr. Moore exposes one to his wisdom patience and sense of humor. Dr. Moore has a remarkable ability to find a compromise between seemingly opposing points of view. When you have Dr. Moore in the room, you can be sure he'll find a way out from an apparently impassable situation and will suggest a solution to everyone's satisfaction. Um, thank you for the opportunity to work with you and learn from you, Dr. Moore. So there we were, near Steamboat Springs in the middle of winter, backcountry skiing. I'm driving the snowmobile, Dr. Moore's in the back, and Peter and Hunter have taken a run. And I go around the curve too fast and I roll the snowmobile and Dr. Moore goes flying into a snowdrift. My first thought is, man, this is bad. We're in the middle of nowhere. And if I didn't kill him, when I dig him out of the snow, he's going to absolutely kill me. I run over, think maybe his leg is broken, and I just quickly dig him out of the snow, and he stares at me. And he just smiles. And he showed an amazing ability that he has. He's imperturbable. Even under the most adverse circumstances, I haven't seen him get mad. He stays cool. And he just takes care of business. In fact, I spent two years in the lab doing research just trying to keep up with him between work running marathons mountain bike rides from denver to vail triathlons flying around the country and even to munich presenting at meetings the man is just non-stop I'm convinced he doesn't sleep, because if he did, then he wouldn't be able to get as much done. And he doesn't get tired either. He works at a tempo that would be exhausting, just a blistering pace that few can keep up with. And the next day, day after that, does it again and again and again. It's legendary. Dr. Moore, I'm so happy for you. Congratulations on your honor. You've defined the word mentorship and you've showed me so much. And for all of us, we say thank you. It's a pleasure to offer my congratulations to Gene Moore on the occasion of this well-deserved tribute. It has been a privilege to have Gene as a colleague and friend for more than 30 years. Gene, your records of clinical contributions, basic science research, dedication to the education of future trauma and acute care surgeons, and leadership are unparalleled in our discipline. I hope that you will be proud as you reflect on these achievements and that these festivities will be a joyous time for you and your family. Finally, all good wishes for a future filled with happiness. As a general surgery resident and a trauma research fellow, Dr. Moore has had an incredible impact on my life personally and professionally. One of the reasons that I came to this program for residency was because of Dr. Moore. 
he was one of the reasons why I became so passionate about a future in trauma surgery. He is also the reason that I wanted to pursue a career in scientific research. And one of the happiest days of residency was the day that I found out I would have the opportunity to work in his lab as one of his trauma research fellows. He's been an incredible mentor to me. He has taught me by example how to be an avaricious reader and leader, which I've learned from him usually go hand in hand, uh, what it truly means to be a surgeon scientist, and above all, uh, how to be a patient advocate and turn scientific questions and patient cases into translational impact. Beyond the personal and professional impact he's had on my life, he is truly legendary in the field of trauma surgery. He has written the books that I study and he is the reason that I train the way that I do in trauma surgery. So his legacy is truly timeless. And what I appreciate most about Dr. Moore is his humility. Despite his notoriety, he is constantly focused on promoting the team, uplifting others, promoting young professionals, and uh, really making sure that uh, people are aware that what he does is a team effort and is part of an interdisciplinary group of people that are working very hard every day. And the other thing I appreciate about Dr. Moore is his focus on family and promoting work-life balance. He's always told me to work hard and play harder, and I've learned how to do that during research. So I really can't say enough how much I appreciate Dr. Moore and the impact that he's had on me personally and professionally. He will be one of the greatest mentors in my life. So thanks, Dr. Moore. Jane. Hi, it's Carl. I am a little surprised and very pleased and proud to have been asked to participate. So I had to think about what I was going to say. And I suppose that I have to say that I'm glad I got a chance to think with you. I'm glad I had a chance to talk with you. I'm glad I had a chance to ski with you. And um, I think I learned something from all of those experiences. I'm just glad you never picked up a guitar because you probably would have been good at that too. <laughs> um, I'm just sorry we never got a chance to operate together. Congratulations, take care of yourself, and I still expect to see, ski with you in the future. Much love. It's my oldest sibling. Because of that, I consider him to be my wisest sibling. I thought maybe I could share with you just a few of the lessons he's taught us over the years. The first one is to stay focused. Uh, Gene demonstrated this at an early age. He decided he wanted to do surgery, and as a teenager, he operated on uh, skunks, raccoons, dogs, snakes, and he honed his skills so that by the time he got to college, he could operate on his fraternity brothers when there were accidents at the pig fest. Another lesson that Gene has taught us all is to just go for it. No matter what you decide to do, whether it's your career or rock climbing, or running marathons, or drinking tequila and swallowing raw eggs. Uh, you just need to do your best. And you should really try not to settle for second place. And the third lesson is that Jean really values and treasures family, particularly his immediate family. But he has also been a wonderful, protective, and caring sibling. And he has always been for, there for me over the years. Um, my husband has had a couple medical emergencies, and Jean has patiently and carefully guided through, us through that. Uh, most of all, I want him to know that we are forever proud of him, not just for this honor, but for the many, many honors he's received over the years. So, Jean, here it is. I love you. Jean Moore has impacted our lives as he has accepted us into his family. We admire his dedication to his work and medicine, 
his love for family, and most of all, dogs. Congratulations, Jim. Well deserved. Jim Moore, maybe you don't have the idea, but my life has been impacted for you since I was a medical resident during the Congress of the Pan American Trauma Society. You have been a leader and mentor for a generation of trauma surgeons in Brazil. I really appreciate you, your capacity to teach for us and to bring people together, developing ways to take care of the trauma patients. I'm Dr. Michael Dubik from the U.S. Army Institute of Surgical Research. I am honored to be participating in the special celebration to honor Dr. Moore. On behalf of our institute, as their unofficial spokesperson, Gene, we wanted to thank you for all you've done for military medicine. Your mentorship as a senior visiting surgeon at Landstuhl in Germany has helped improve overall combat casualty care. Together with your support of military-sponsored research and through the military supplements published in the Journal of Trauma and Acute Care Surgery, you have helped bring awareness that has resulted in lives saved during the recent wars. Again, congratulations on the renaming of the Trauma Center at Denver Health in your honor, and we look forward to continuing collaboration with you. Uh, you've been the most influential uh, person in my career. Um, just sitting in my office in between cases, and just remember that exactly 20 years ago, I've been working in your uh, institution in the Denver General as a junior resident and doing some research as well. And uh, I was happy to use your office for a week while you were away and I uh, practically lived in there before I got some accommodation and I learned uh, in Denver General that uh, is actually pretty normal. How uh, you are still influencing me uh, every day, uh, the best proof is here in my office desk. As you can see here, next to my uh, computer, there is this little framed uh, uh, abstract and uh, I sent you this 20 years ago this was one of uh, actually first proper uh, abstracts from me uh, in um, on multi multiple organ failure and we sent it to WEST and I thought that that abstract was pretty good uh, and you see the old uh, red marking on that which you probably done on the pommel of a saddle on a hunting trip and you got back to me and it's here that it's quite a good start. So uh, anyway the paper made it to the WSD and the Journal of Trauma and um, I keep it uh, here on my office table uh, to um, stay very humble because every time when I think that something is going well and I'm doing right, this reminds me that uh, I can still always feel an absolute idiot when you look at my work. And it's inspiring and thanks very much for all your mentorship through the years and uh, uh, see you around soon. Bye bye. Hey Gene, this is Bill Cheadle here. Just wanted to congratulate you on a phenomenally great career. You've always been one of my heroes. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but we met uh, way back when in 1988 when we were on Gene Feist's Munich conference and your uh, boys and Sarah were up there and we had a great time at the conference and was skiing in the Alps, the Austrian Alps that is, and repeated that many, many times. Uh, you've been a pioneer in the management of trauma and its research as well. You've impacted uh, so many lives. Uh, you, know, you should be very, very proud of your great career. I hope you don't totally, truly retire and still uh, cover some cases now and then because you still have so much uh, wisdom to offer uh, the next generation. It's been great to uh, be associated with you and uh, certainly the um, research you have produced has impacted myself in the care of uh, trauma patients here at the University of Louisville. So from all of us at the University of Louisville, a hearty congratulations on a phenomenal uh, career. All the best. See you, buddy. Hey, Gene, this is uh, Bill Cheadle here again. Just realized I was shooting the video of my feet the entire time. So again, I uh, want to congratulate you on a wonderful career. You've been a hero to me for my whole career. 
We met uh, way back in 88 at one of Feist conferences and went skiing in the Alps and you actually helped me uh, burn uh, a little tab on my ski so it wouldn't drag so much. That was our first exposure. Uh, your career has been phenomenal. The research you produce has impacted everyone's care of the trauma patient. You've impacted tons of young people's lives and uh, I think you've just uh, been absolutely superb. You'll always be one of my heroes. I always look up to you and I thank you for impacting my life and the care of our trauma patients here at the University of Louisville. Uh, you're a star and I hope you enjoy your retirement but I hope you will continue to uh, teach in some form because your wisdom uh, certainly uh, needs to be shared uh, forever. All the best and congratulations to you and Sarah and the boys and uh, hope to run into you soon. See you buddy, bye. So my story with Uncle Weiner starts on the side of a mountain. I had moved to Colorado for the summer in college and instead of taking the easy path, we got a little misguided and found ourselves scrambling up the side of a very intense 14,000 foot mountain. Although terrified, this impressed upon me the need to get outside, enjoy the mountains, take risks, pursue adventure. In addition to mountain climbing and outdoor adventures, Uncle Weiner, like his father and my grandfather, has led our family in pursuing careers of service through medicine, research, teaching, education, and social work. Uncle Weiner has put our family first and has taught us all to do the same. Thanks for all that you've taught me. Congratulations, Jean. You've been a great mentor and friend for a long time. And uh, I have a lot of fond memories of the times we spent together, AAST, Western Trauma, uh, and all the other places around the world that we've been together. It, uh, to succeed in academic surgery, you have to have somebody looking out for you, and you've always been there for me. Uh, I especially fond of the day I was sitting at the AAST meeting and you came up and asked me if I wanted to be the secretary treasurer. Uh, thank you for that one and for all the rest. Gil. Good morning, my name is Peg Burnett and I'm the Chief Financial Officer at Denver Health. And I'm here to give a tribute to Dr. Gene Moore. I started at Denver Health on January 31st, 1996, when Denver Health was still Denver General. And of course, Gene had already been here for many years and was well known. On my very first day here, I met with Dr. Patty Gabbo. And she talked about the two things that were most important to her here at Denver Health. She didn't say that at the time, but I would come to learn that that was the case. One was disproportionate share funding, the other was Dr. Jean Moore. At the time, I didn't know anything about either one, but I would soon learn, if I was to survive here at Denver Health, that both were critically important to our success. Over the years, I've really enjoyed working with Jean, and I have felt comfortable here knowing that he was here at Denver Health. When I become concerned about other hospitals who try to grab more market share of insured patients, I think to myself, well, we have Gene, and I feel like we're gonna be okay. I really appreciate a couple things about Gene. One is his ability to multitask. I can also multitask, and I know that many people think that multitasking is not a good idea, and so I figure as long as Gene's multitasking, it's okay if I do the same. One example of this was I attended, over the years, a couple trauma surgery staff meetings. Gene chaired the meeting, but he would multitask. He would read academic articles or edit work from his students during the meeting. And it seemed like he wasn't listening, but he was tuned in for sure. One night at one of the meetings, we were talking about some federal rules about coding. And one of the faculty members was really giving me the business about the rule. And actually kind of cussing me out about it. And then at some point, Gene looked up and said, okay, well, we're gonna move on to the next topic now. And the faculty member said, wait a minute, we didn't resolve this issue. And Jean said, well, uh, you heard Peg. She said that that's a federal rule. She doesn't make the federal rules. So if you want to go change that, go to Washington, D.C. I thought that was very good support from Jean. The other thing that I appreciate about Jean is his directness. There have been things over the years that he's been unhappy about related to finance or the areas under my responsibility. And he would just let me know. And there was no drama, no ongoing dialogue, just like one and done. For example, 
There are a couple staff members that he didn't think were doing a good job on behalf of the Department of Surgery. He emailed me a statement that says, I am unimpressed. And then I'd write back to him about what my plan of action was, and he'd say thank you. And that was it, one and done. I think that it's a very fitting tribute that Gene Moore should be um, the recipient of this honor and have the Gene Ernest E. Moore Shock Trauma Center named after him. And I look forward to honoring him further and also to working with him for many years to come. Thank you, Gene, for all you've done for Denver General and Denver Health. Dr. Moore, this is Bruce Crooks from the Medical University of South Carolina filming this video tribute to you. Um, in honor of the naming of the Ernest E. Moore Shock Trauma Center at Denver Health. I want to thank you for everything that you've done for my patients and for me in their care. I've never rounded with you. I've never operated with you. But I can honestly say that you have changed the way that I care for my patients and they and I will be forever grateful. Congratulations on this day. I'm incredibly thrilled for you and very happy for you. Congratulations. It really is a privilege to be able to celebrate with Dr. Moore and his family this evening the befitting honor of the naming of the Denver Health Trauma Center after him. I'm sure that everything that can be said of Dr. Moore's tremendous contributions to the field of trauma surgery, to surgical research and to surgical education um, has already been said. But personally, as a former resident uh, in the University of Colorado surgical program as well as one of his former research fellows in his laboratory. I've always most appreciated the generosity that Dr. Moore has always given to me and to his trainees of his time. Whether it's taking the time to impart his wisdom on how to better manage a complex trauma patient or uh, figuring out the uh, and troubleshooting the details of uh, looking for inflammatory mediators in uh, rat lymph, or uh, just uh, sharing his humor and his love of what he was doing with us. I've always been felt that uh, I've been very blessed to have had the mentorship of Dr. Moore um, and uh, been part of uh, his vision in uh, creating uh, the uh, research and center of excellence that he uh, has led for so many years at uh, Denver Health uh, and at the University of Colorado. Congratulations, Dr. Moore, and thank you very much for everything you've done for me in my career. Thank you. If you know the family tree, that means that I was sandwiched between John and Fred. Now, at that time in our family, there were two younger sisters, Debbie and Terry, but they weren't much help because they were just trying to survive too. If you've heard the stories, about our childhood, know that that's just the tip of the iceberg. Life at the ranch was exotic. It was wild, it was crazy, and it was outrageous. The beleaguered babysitters, the har harangued neighbors who experienced their pumpkins being blown up, the puzzled teachers, it's all true and much more. I really don't know why our parents continued to have children. We were not a Catholic family. Of course, glad they did. Jean went on after high school to graduate with honors, having lettered in many sports, but really his personality didn't change. He remained bold, curious, mischievous, and independent. He has a favorite quote in life, which is life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather to slide in broadside in a cloud of smoke. I think you'd all see that in him. It started when he was about two. For me, my brother represents to seize the day. Whether it's work, family, play, love, give it your all. Enjoy the ride and be happy. I'm having the Trauma Center at Denver Health take your name. You have certainly influenced the lives of every physician, trainee, and patient that have crossed the doors of that trauma center. And although the name just went up on the building this summer, you know and we know 
that your trainees and patients have been carrying around your name in your day-to-day -day lives and practices for decades. Your example of physical, mental, and academic endurance is a testimony as to how hard work is key to making most impact while living a meaningful life. Please send my best to everybody in the lab and at Denver Health. Cheers. I met Gene Moore through Western Trauma when I was beginning my career in trauma surgery. Gene even then was widely respected, nationally known as a leader in trauma. And what I appreciated most was his willingness to encourage, mentor, and foster those that were just developing. What his relationship has meant to me has been the ability to further the trauma program and a trauma systems approach in my home state of Kansas. I will forever be indebted for his support and willingness to help others. Thanks, Gene. I'm thrilled to see that the trauma center at the Denver Health has been named after Dr. Gene Moore. To me, he represents the best that we have to offer in terms of innovation, leadership, mentorship, pushing new ideas and concepts and doing it by the force of his personality and by leading from the front. There's nobody in the trauma community who's more widely respected and admired uh, than Dr. Chien Moore. And I think it's a fitting uh, tribute to somebody who's devoted his entire life to the care of trauma patients and to advancing the science of trauma research both in the basic science domain and in clinical practice. Congratulations, Dr. Moore. Congratulations to Denver Health for selecting you for this honor. Dr. Moore, congratulations on having the Trauma Center at Denver Health take your name. You have certainly influenced the lives of every trainee and patient that have crossed the doors of that trauma center. And although your name just went up on the wall this summer, you have certainly influenced Dr. Moore, congratulations on having the Dr. Moore, congratulations on having the Trauma Center at Denver Health take your name. You have certainly influenced Dr. Moore, congratulations on having the Trauma Center at Denver Health take your name. Dr. Moore, congratulations on having the Trauma Center at Denver Health take your name. You have certainly influenced the lives of every trainee and patient that have crossed the doors of that trauma center. And although your name just went up on the wall this summer, you know and we know that patients and physicians that have come through Denver Health have been carrying your name around for decades. You are an example of physical, mental, and academic endurance that prove testimony that hard work is key to making most impact while living a Dr. Moore, congratulations on having the Trauma Center at Denver Health take your name. Dr. Moore, congratulations on having Dr. Moore, congratulations on having the Trauma Center at Denver Health take your name. You have certainly influenced the lives of physicians, trainees, and patients that have come through the Dr. Moore, congratulations on having the Trauma Center at Denver Health take your name. You have certainly influenced the lives of every physician, trainee, and patient that have crossed the doors of that trauma center. And although the name just went up on the building this summer, you know and we know that your trainees and patients have been carrying around your name in their day-to-day -day lives and practices for decades. Your example of physical, mental, and academic endurance is a testimony as to how hard work is key to making most impact while living a meaningful life. Please send my best to everybody in the lab and at Denver Health. Dr. Moore, Jean, Tex, whatever name you're going by, I am so proud to say you have been my friend, mentor, and boss for 37 years. 
from the Days in the Research Lab, Volleyball on Bannock Street, clinical trials too numerous to mention, to now the Ernest E. Moore Shock Trauma Center at Denver Health. I am so fortunate to have been part of this adventure. Jean, you and Sarah have been friends with Mark and me for over 30 years. You've danced the limbo at our wedding. We've attended many a Christmas party. You've always been there for us and our children. And you've even attended our own daughter's wedding. But friendship aside, what an honor and pleasure it has been to have worked with you for all these years. You are patient and kind as a teacher. You offer constructive criticism when necessary, and you are a champion as a leader. You continue to allow me to share on this amazing journey with you at Denver Health, and I thank you for that. I know you're not retiring, and you may not be here in 30 years. But for now, here's to a lifetime of a beautiful and peachy friendship. Thanks, Jean. What a fabulous idea to create a video tribute for Dr. Moore. Um, the questions that we were provided are to talk about the impact um, that you have had on us personally, I guess. And I would say for me, the fact that I've been reading your work since I was a resident now for more than 20 years, let's just say. Uh, and that everything you do still is on the cutting edge. I look at what you're doing now with the work with coagulation and uh, I think that the thing that has affected me most is the fact that you are a true scientist and you um, take a question and go about answering it and bringing the work from the bench to the bedside. Uh, congratulations. Um, I hope I'll get an opportunity someday to see the trauma center. Um, congratulations on behalf of everyone here at Shock Trauma. Bye. Right. Good evening, everybody. Wanda Chesna here in UMC uh, Charity Hospital. Um, I'm happy to do this video uh, in honor for Dr. Moore, Jim Moore. Uh, in his uh, dedication of the Chuck Trauma Center at Denver Health. Um, if I can describe my relationship with Gene and what I've learned from Gene, I basically put down a couple of adjectives of uh, things I've learned from Gene through the years. And when I think about Gene, uh, I think about somebody that is well dedicated, passionate, smart, mustache, uh, a father, family man, a master surgeon, honest, very honest. Uh, I learned that through Journal of Trauma. And above all, a good friend. I'm happy to be here tonight celebrating this with you and your family. Congratulations. Congratulations, Gene and, and Sarah. Sarah. What a great honor. Gene and Sarah, we've been friends for 40 years. And I want to tell you how much your friendship has meant to me and how much it has made uh, my life and the life of my family so much better. You are wonderful people and will always have a special place in my heart. We love you very much. Congratulations once again. I first met Gene in, in the, at the University of Vermont. He was a third year surgery resident and I was just an acting intern, fourth year medical student on the service. I didn't know a thing, but Gene knew everything, could do everything, and in a nice and supportive way to everyone on the team. He was a true inspiration for me, and I know for others in my group and others at, you know, at Vermont, um, as, as to what a truly excellent surgeon could be. I have been proud to be in a similar kind of discipline as he. I've watched and followed his career with uh, uh, admiration and gratitude for all he has contributed to the field. Um, he's just been a great role model uh, and a great person. So thank you, Gene. Thank you, Gene, for all those years, and I hope your memories of Vermont are as fond as mine. Thanks so very much. And 
now I present you with the top 10 list of things I appreciate about Dr. Moore and what he has taught me. Number 10, let's start with the obvious. Dr. Moore's unrivaled contributions to the advancement of care of the injured, which have saved countless lives. Number nine, don't lose sleep over things you cannot control. He told me Sarah taught him this. Number eight, whatever you do, pursue excellence. Make anything in your control better, always. Number seven, love what you do for a living. Work should not be work. Number six, family must be a priority. And family is not complete without a minimum of one large slobbery dog and cats don't count. Number five, sometimes you might piss people off, but if you're doing what's right, everything will work out. Number four, skiing your face off in waist deep powder is one of life's greatest gifts. Number three, exercise, exercise, exercise. Don't do that. Number two, it is a privilege and an honor to provide life-saving care to someone who is having the worst day of their life. Never take this lightly. And finally, number one, if you see a bottle of tequila and a dozen eggs come out at a Christmas party, leave the premises immediately. Congratulations, Dr. Moore. Thank you for everything. Hi, Dr. Moore, it's Lisa and Dane. Recording from Dallas, Texas. We wish we were there to celebrate with you. We are both better humans and surgeons for having been trained by you. We're most appreciative of the time we got to spend with you outside of the operating room, enjoying the mountains. You expected a lot of your trainees and you treated us like capable surgeons and ultimately friends. For that, we are forever grateful. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Moore. How has my life been impacted by Gene Moore? Well, he helped me appreciate tequila and raw eggs. He compelled me to run the Steamboat Half Marathon and I permanently injured my knee. But on the plus side, he inspired me to write my first paper. He inspired me to enter a career in trauma surgery, which I've enjoyed. He gave me opportunity after opportunity to write. Hey Walt, I've got this review article for the British Journal of Hospital Medicine. Or, hey Walt, you want to write up our experience with carotid artery injuries? Everything I have accomplished in my career, I give credit to Gene for either helping me or teaching me the skills to do it. Gene was the best role model I can imagine. He always set the pace for the group. I don't know anybody who worked harder or accomplished more. He taught us to practice based on the evidence. There wasn't a DG way, there was the best way. We practiced based on the best evidence. And where there wasn't evidence, we did the studies and created the evidence. And while everybody knew he was the smartest guy in the room on any given day, everybody also knew that he was going to read more than any of us on that day. It was inspiring to be in that environment, to be pushed to see what we could accomplish. DG was always Gene Moore's trauma center, and now his name is on the building to show that to everybody. Congratulations, Gene. And thanks for everything. Dr. Moore, congratulations. And I'm truly honored to be able to submit this video for you. So we have two questions to answer. One, how has my life been influenced by Dr. Moore? Well, it's pretty complicated. To be honest, it's immeasurable. Uh, when we first met, this was me, flying helicopters. And after many liters of beer, and a lot of discussions, you kind of showed me that I can do really anything that you put your mind to. So today, we are at University of California Davis in general surgery. Now, your life still continues to uh, influence me quite a bit. Every time that I have a question, I actually go to the literature, I look it up, and more times than not, I find your papers. 
and they guide me in the right direction of where I need to go and how to take care of patients the best. In that aspect, you pretty much touch everybody's lives in an unbelievable amount. The second part is what do I appreciate most about you? Um, for this one, I think it's your ability to really do everything at 110%. Um, be it family, be it work, be it friends, and more importantly, may it be drinking beer at Oktoberfest. So, Dr. Moore, for you, I have to say that I am truly honored to not only be able to call you a mentor, but also a friend. Prost. Dr. Moore, this is Dave Drees up north in Minnesota. I'm sure there are many chapters in the book I'm holding which are a testimony to your clinical and academic leadership. One chapter which I didn't immediately notice but have come to truly appreciate is chapter 63 where you talk to us about how we think about analysis of the work that we do. That's come in very handy to me personally and I'm beginning to use it in my education for my residents and my fellows. Thank you. What a great opportunity to pay tribute to Dr. Moore. I have many memories in the trauma bay and the OR, but more importantly is how much emphasis he put on family and exercise and time away from the hospital. He would always make his annual elk hunts and make sure that he ran his 20 miles after a hard night of call. I loved the memories in the stairwells at Denver Health where we would do pyramids running up and down and he would oftentimes beat some of the most unsuspecting interns and residents. Thank you for all of the opportunity to learn both in and out of the OR. This is a well-deserved award. Ready? Go. Ho, Shotsky! I'm Gene for uh, 20 years, if you include the time uh, as a medical student and a resident. And I think what I and, and, and my colleagues uh, in anesthesia most appreciate about Gene is, is that he is just the consummate trauma surgeon and team player. Uh, when, when Gene comes into OR1 and, and things are going badly, there's a, there's a real sense of calm uh, that is felt throughout the room. And uh, when he gets in there and, and is operating, he's really focused on what's in front of him. Uh, he may occasionally, uh, you know, ask us, uh, are you guys giving blood or the heart feels kind of empty? But otherwise, he's really focused on the surgical problems. He's not yelling for a bunch of things. He's not, he's not asking us about access or pressors or things like that. He's really focused on the problem in front of him. And so, um, and, and when, you know, of course, with Gene operating most of the time, uh, things go well, but when they don't, uh, he always involves us in the decision as to whether or not we need to keep uh, pressing on. So um, I cannot think of anyone who has had more positive and lasting an impact on the management of trauma at this hospital than Gene Moore, and thus I think it is fitting and proper that we name our trauma center in his honor. Gene, uh, thank you for all that you've done for me uh, for our department and for Denver Health. Gene and Sarah and to your assembled colleagues and friends. Gene, at the October meeting of the AAST in Chicago in 1981, I was the hunter and you were the prey. I was on the lookout for a young surgeon scientist and trauma surgery role model who could be a keynote speaker in the general surgery section program of our Royal Australasian College of Surgeons in May 1991. After hearing a presentation from you and checking out your bona fides with mutual colleagues, uh, I tossed you the bait and fortunately you took it. It was such a pleasure for Anne and me to meet uh, Sarah and yourself and your two young boys, uh, Peter and Hunter, at Sydney Airport in May 1991. 
and to show you some of the sights <coughs> and shorelines of Sydney. <coughs> uh, the strength uh, and uh, inspiration of your contributions uh, to that general surgery section program um, ensured that a, uh, an important aspiration of mine would be fulfilled. There has been a very strong trauma su surgery section uh, in the program of that Congress for all of the 27 years which have followed. Your influence extended as you visited Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane and Auckland. Jean, thank you so much for your support and encouragement of trauma surgeons in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, thank you for your uh, training of young surgeon scientists who are now our leaders in their particular fields of expertise. One of them, Zolf Balog, now occupies the position which I vacated as Professor of Surgery in Newcastle, Australia. And finally, thank you uh, to uh, Sarah and yourself for your friendships towards uh, Anne and me and towards so many other trauma practitioners and their partners around the world as we have had the pleasure and privilege to meet over the years. Congratulations on your achievements, enjoy your celebrations and best wishes for your future.